Now let's talk about error approx uh, estimation. So sometimes we have, we're in physics lab, for example, we're measuring a value. And that value has, an, we, we, our devices have uh, a certain um, limits. And so we have an error in approximations of values. Now let's assume that let's say the value that we're approximating is a length and we want to figure out a volume. So I have to use my faulty uh, uh, measurement in uh, another function and find the output of that function. Output of that function, because the input was uh, basically um, had some error in measurements, will have some error in measurements. It's in, and it's important for us to limit the uh, the error for output. So one of the ways to figure out uh, this error is in Calc 1 is, is tangent line. And, um, and of course, in Calc 2 and Calc 3, you learn more. Calc 3, you learn about uh, multiple measurements that, that give you an output. In Calc 2, you learn other methods of finding errors. But Calc 1, most physics lab use the Calc 1 until they uh, their multiple measurements to plug in, which is Calc 3. And, and so let's see. And, and also we give you some examples of everyday life. Uh, now, let's assume that your uh, input is what you're measuring in the lab has error delta x. We call that d of x. Delta x and d of x are the same thing at, at this point. Then um, what I do is, and, and you measure the value and it's a. So I'm plugging it into the function, let's say function is the volume, and I'm getting f of a. But let's say your approximation could land anywhere in here, right? And so how, how bad does it work if, if the, the actual measurement, input measurement, would have been x over here, right? And x over here, what I would get is this value, not that value. So why I would get f of x, not f of a. So the difference between f of x and f of a is the actual error, it's delta y. But if I had any way to measure this correctly, I was not even discussing it right now, right? So I want to approximate the error that I made. And approximating the error that I made is I use the tangent line at f of a, and I say, well, if I had used the tangent line, I would have approximated this y f of x value to be this value, l a of x. And the difference between l a of x and f of a is basically, del we call it dy. What is it? So uh, I'm saying, the difference between L A of X minus F of A. If you subtract what you have before, this is going to be F prime of X, F prime of A, I'm sorry, times X minus A. Let's look at this. What did we call delta X? We called X minus A delta X, right? All of these are going to have an absolute value around them, but I'm just discussing it when x is bigger than a at this point. And then we say that all of these are going to have absolute value around them. Um, now, therefore, and then I'm saying that this is actually this value, which is dy. So different, the y of the tangent line minus f at the point a, at the nice point, or at the measurement point is going to give me f prime and the difference between the actual value and the measurement point. And that's how we approximate error. And so again, delta f is the same thing as delta y, and it's the, uh, the, the 
actual value at the uh, if the uh, of the of f at the point minus the value of f at the measurement point and df or dy is the f prime times delta x and this is this is easily seen through the um, uh, through the change on line approximation that we discussed again um, so one more time uh, repeating the same thing linear approximation error if the value of x is measured at x equal to a with an error of plus minus delta x then delta f the error is estimating f of x can be approximated by delta f equal to uh, f of x minus f of a f of a approximated by f prime of a delta x equal to uh, delta f so again here plus minus delta x and i went switched it to a positive value here or, or absolute value of the actual error now uh, so example two in standing 100 meters from a building so this is my building here's the building And then you're standing 100 meters from the building and you're looking up and let's say you're laying down on the floor and or, or your, your height is negligible, one of the two. And then this is 100 meter and then the angle that you see the building is 60 degrees, right? How can I measure the um, uh, how can I measure the uh, height of the building? That's the first thing. How tall is the building? How accurate is your approximation if your measurement of angle is within three degrees error? So again, what you're measuring is the angle theta equal to sixty degrees. That's your a. A equal to 60 degrees. Well, I don't like 60 degrees, do I? Because differentiation is going to cause trouble. So instead, I'm going to go to radian, which is pi over 3. And pi over 3 radian, right? And so, or, or I can call this, again, I wrote A, so you remember that's the, um, the point that we're measuring at. And then delta x is going to be equal to three degrees. Again, I don't like degrees. What do I like? I like um, in, in radian. So I go three times pi divided by 180. And I get pi over 60. Three times six, 180. So, that's the delta x that I'm getting. That's the input is changing um, by pi over um, 60. Now, now that's, that's the, the story told, right? So first of all, let's figure out how tall is the building. The building, if, if I use how tall is the building at the approximated value, and so that would be, this is the height. This is the height. And this height, um, and what I see is height divided by 100 gives me tangent of theta or tangent of x, whichever you want to do. And, um, and so using this, I can actually measure the height. And theta is pi over 3, so height is equal to 100 tangent of theta. And height is approximated by 100 tangent of pi 
Pythard. Uh, sine of pi third is squared of three over two. Cosine of pi third is one half. So uh, tangent of pi third is squared of three over two. So it's hundred squared of three meters. Okay. So that's a nice piece of information. What else do I need? I it's asking how accurate is your estimate? And um, how do I find the accuracy of the estimate? I have to figure out um, what delta y is. So let's go to the next page. And so this is my approximation. And now I have to figure out what approximate delta y. Delta y is approximated by d and dy. And what was y? Um, in here, instead of y, I had h. And h was 100. Again, 100 was the value that I was, I was pretty accurate. Tangent theta, right? So delta h is going to be approximated by dh, which is equal to derivative of this thing, which is 100. Derivative of tan, uh, tan theta is going to be secant squared theta. And then multiply by delta theta. And then, um, and so I approximate that at theta equal to pi third. And so that's, that's it. You just find a derivative. You multiply it by the change in, in the input. Change in output is approximated by the derivative at the measurement times change in the input. This one is derivative at the measurement times change or error in the input. And so delta H is going to be delta H is 100 secant squared of pi third times pi over 60. And secant squared um, is 1 over cosine, uh, 1 over cosine squared. Cosine squared of uh, uh, pi third is 1 half. So secant squared of pi, pi the third is going to be 4. And, and then you multiply them all together to get this value. And you get uh, 20.94 meters. And that's the, and look at this. This is the uh, output approximation that you get with the measurements that you have. And this is going to be the approximation of the error that you may get, which is pretty high. So we discussed this, and when and sort of you you know the input, the, the measurements of input, you know the error in the measurement of the input, you found the measurement and the output. A lot of times in real life, people are going to ask you to actually limit your output error. So how do we go about doing this? Example three, uh, a gaming company produces cubicle dice for shipping purposes. Each die must have volume 80 cubic centimeter with a, to a tolerance of plus minus two centi cubic centimeter. How long should each dice be and how much variation can, uh, can be allowed? Here's the question. What is the measurement and uh, the input measurement? That would be the length. So here's the cube. And each side is, let's say, x. So the volume is going to be x to the third. And if I plug in when, for whatever value of x, I'm going to get um, AD centimeter cubed. 
and I know that my x measurement has error of positive. Delta the v of x is x to power 3 or q, uh, x cubed, cube, and it's asking you that uh, we want output to be uh, 80 cubic centimeter. So um, in the tolerance of the output is plus minus 2 cubic centimeter. That means that delta V is going to be uh, less than, we want delta V to be less than 2 cubic centimeter. Um, again, delta V is supposed to be approximated by dV and dV is going to be uh, basically V prime at point A times delta x. And um, so what I want is to figure out what delta x, what error in measurement in, uh, in the input will uh, give me the right value. Now, um, one thing is that I, I don't know what A is. So I have to figure out what A is. A over here. And, um, and then I have to figure out what delta X is. Finding A is not too bad because I know that um, the output V at A is going to be 80. So I plug in a to power 3 and I get AD. So A has to be third root of 80. That was not too bad. And I know del DV is uh, V prime at A times delta X. Now, I have to figure out V prime. V prime at X is equal to 3X squared. And then I'll plug in A. And so V prime at third root of 80 is going to give me uh, 3, this to power 2, which is going to be 80 to power 2 third, right? And then what I want is 3 times 80 to power two third times delta x to be less than or equal to two. And then I compute delta x, which delta x is less than or equal to two over uh, three eighty to power two third, which is then so it gives us the maximum error that we can get as um, as we compute this. And Here's the value that we get. It's going to be uh, approximately 0 0.0359. So the error in approximate in uh, measurement of the length should be pretty small. And uh, uh, the sign length should be between, again, this was the value that we found from the uh, the, the output measurement um, and this is the value that we found using the tangent line in the error and so the, the side length should be that plus minus this value.